You know how we do when we have funky music in our ear. We get to right to ain't no fighting, we just in there trying to win. Ooh, yeah, la-di-da, we grinding hard. Ooh, yeah, we not gonna stop. Turn back now. I got work to do on a mission by my business. I'm pushing through. Once again, we're back. I'm Nicholas Austin Holiday. I'm and Antoine is, Jackson. And this week's top 25 is sponsored by C Vibe. So we're gonna get into some top 25 football action and just you know kind of go over what happened first. Upset.com. Let me go through the rundown go of all the ranked teams in the top 25 that lost. Number two, number three, number four, number six, number eight, number 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. All of those teams lost that were ranked in the top 25 this past Saturday. This might have been one of the craziest Saturdays of football that I've seen in a very long time. You know what that tells me? Whoever doing these votes, they don't know what they're doing. Because, first of all, when TCU beat Oklahoma, they shot up 16 spots. I mean, the thing is, whoever, this is why we need more teams in the playoffs, because it's obvious that you can't say who's going to be who on any given Saturday. So all the years where we had one and two teams in the playoffs and people were in the championship and other teams got snubbed because of one loss, I just saw Mississippi State open a can on Texas A&M. And I seen Ole Miss open another can on Alabama, but to make that worse, they told Alabama what they were going to do, and then they came and did it. Nobody thought, I did, anybody, if you lived outside of Mississippi, you didn't think Ole Miss would beat Alabama. I did not. Now, I heard a couple people say they weren't that impressed. And, you know, when people say it's like, okay, whatever you say. However, Ole Miss took it to Alabama. Oh, most definitely. They got they got physical with them. Physical. Alabama, Alabama's built off of being physical, physicality. <laughs> Ole Miss got right with them. Ole Miss has a top defense. They have speed and strength all over that defense. All right, Kandechi, man, he's good. You know, he can slide in and play defensive tackle. He can slide out and play defensive end. Is he going top ten? Is he top ten, top five? Where is he going? Uh, when he comes out. What about that shit he's coming out? I, I give him top 15. I give him top 15. Let's see where he falls in there. You know, he has his brother, the older Kandechi, playing linebacker, representing two. So, that, that defense is mean and nasty. And they and they really got after they really got after Alabama in this game. Oh, the, the dude Henry, he didn't, I didn't hardly hear him at all. Nah, he had a couple of Derrick Henry, the running back for uh, did Alabama. Have, did he have a hundred or no? I don't. I, I doubt don't. it. He had a couple of good runs, but you know what? Oh, like I said, Ole Miss got physical with him at the the point of attack. Pain. Exactly. Pain is a great teacher. When you bring in that thumper, <laughs> yeah, they gonna feel it. He wasn't running as hard as he was running before because he brought that thing to him. Exactly. That's what happened. And Derrick Henry's a big guy, about 6'2", 225. He never been hit like that. I don't think he ever been hit. I guess he maybe ran into, into some guys that weren't scared. When you're not scared, anything can happen. Exactly. Because he not, they weren't, Ole Miss was definitely not scared. I thought they were the bullies for a minute. Exactly. But I want to talk about a couple of Thursday night games. We have Arizona defeating Oregon. Oregon is exposed again. Every year. When is, when is Oregon not exposed? Every year. You know, Oregon has all the speed in the world. They have all the skilled players in the world. But games are won on the line of scrimmage. If you can't, if you can't run the ball down other other teams throw when you need to, and you can't stop them, you, you know it really doesn't matter how much speed you have on your team. This is true. Every time Oregon comes in flashy, the money team, big time spreads. The spread was twenty three with Arizona. Arizona beat them by seven. Rich Rodriguez, Michigan is upset right now. They fired Rich Rodriguez. He was only on the job three years. They said Rich Rodriguez wasn't a Michigan man, whatever that's supposed to mean. And right now, Brady Hoke, who is a Michigan man, is on the hottest seat in America. I don't know who seat is hotter, him, Golden, and Muschamp. I think it's Brady Hoke, though. It has to be Brady it Hoke. It has to be Brady Hoke. If they, if they got that man, they picked the wrong man. And the only time Brady won a BCS was the year with Rich Rod's players. I bet it's been downhill ever since. And Brady Hoke's been doing some. He's been doing some solid recruiting. And that's what everybody but, says. So you can't say so, the recruit. Something's wrong with player development, coaching, something along those lines. The mindset because they're not performing up to their level of talent. And the top running back is out for the year too. Oh, well, that makes it, that makes it even worse. Salt I, in the moon. And you know Brady Hoke got into a little bit of trouble 
little concussion protocol with the quarterback. You got to be aware of what's going on on the field. Uh, Brady Hope's a little old school, doesn't have a headset on the sideline. Well, you know what, Brady Hope? Not having a headset on the home might have cost you your job. Because, so, because a lot of people were upset about that. I heard that Michigan fans were upset because they feel like, why don't you have on a headset? You're the coach. You need to know what's going on. Even if you don't say anything, you need to hear what's going on. Maybe he thinks he's going in the game as a player. I don't know. Well, he couldn't do any worse than the people on the field were doing. So, <laughs> uh, we'll go on to uh, Utah State defeating BYU 35-20. to BYU's do-it-all. Quarterback takes a hill. Injured in the game. Not sure what the diagnosis is. A broken leg. He's out for the season. He's out. Yeah, he's out. There we go. Be white. I mean, you got one player that you depend on to run your whole team. You can't do that. He needs help. He may be Iron Man in the beginning of the year, but during the middle of the year, he's going to wear down. So you need to give this guy some help. But I can't expect somebody to do everything for me. The team, the teams, they need to step in and look at themselves in the mirror and get this guy some help. That goes with the defense for the Miami Hurricanes. Pyramid is one of the main ones doing a lot of work. Arm Bristol. I need those guys to look in the mirror and say, what, what can I do to help the team? Maybe the coaches need to look at themselves too. Maybe they're not putting the players in the right position. However, you can't expect one person to carry your team. Michael Vick couldn't do it for Atlanta. Cam Newton can't do it for Carolina. You're not going to do it in college. It doesn't work like that. One man goes down, that might be a season. And right now, BYU is, they have UCL coming Thursday. They smell blood. Uh, they need a win. All they know is it's BYU. You know what I mean? Hey, something's got to give. Definitely so. I don't think BYU is a contender anymore. I don't think they ever were a contender. Let's not, you know, the media has a way to make certain teams that they like look certain ways. First of all, BYU, I don't think they'll, pre they'll probably beat US up, but I don't think they'll beat every team in Florida. I probably put Bethune on them or something like that to see what happens. Uh, no, I'm not a believer in BYU like that. We'll see what happens Thursday, but if they lose the UCF, the verdict is pretty much proven. The jury will be out on those guys. Um, Auburn, what you think about the Auburn Tigers? That's you know they say they're looking for y'all too. Auburn's looking good. I can't I can't deny it. Auburn. Their, their offense is starting to hit a stride. You know when they're starting to run it down teams' throats. What I will say is Auburn. Auburn beat LSU forty-one to seven, but. LSU, LSU is a pretender this year. Pretender? LSU? They're not a contender this year. It's just young. Yeah, they're, and they're, they're okay. definitely going to get good. They have the talent to where they can get good, but this year is not the year. They ranked, they ranked LSU so high in the beginning of the season SEC that, media. that they're, trying to, they're trying to fight to, to keep them in the rankings. But you know what? Yeah, well, they should be after losing 41-7. Because Kansas State didn't lose the LSU, the yeah. uh, Auburn like that. Yeah, they're actually out of the top 25 now. They, uh, so. Which is rightfully so. And I like LSU, but they should playing like they've been playing that hasn't been LSU football at all. But I never was sold as Les Miles as being a good coach either. I think he always had great talent, but I was never sold on him being a good coach. I think we'll see. hopefully he gets better for his sake, but I'm just not sold on the guy. That's just me. Uh, and they have some they have some good talent. Uh, the young guys, Malachi Dupree, the freshman Fournette. star receiver, yeah. Leonard Fournette. Fournette, the best running back coming, the best running back in the nation How's coming out doing? of high school. How's he doing? Right yeah, now? he's doing okay. He's, he has some he has some solid runs. Uh, obviously, they didn't have too much going on. Final score forty one to seven. Yeah. So I don't I don't. Do you want to say anything else about them? Uh, Nick Marshall is Nick Marshall. Auburn is Auburn. nigga. They stay with a stud running back. The defense is looking better. They look like they have a chip on their shoulder. The way that Auburn is approaching the games, they're looking to me like they felt like the Florida State win. They felt like they should have really won that game. As I sit back when all the emotions clear, they look like, okay, we're on a mission. They look like they were shocked that they lost to Florida State. That's their mentality. Oh, most definitely. I wouldn't be surprised if Auburn and Florida State meet again in the playoff. That's kind of what people may be hoping. But I think definitely with this 14 playoff, there will be some one-loss teams. Because one thing about it, first you thought you had to be undefeated, but now you've opened the door for Ohio State. The door is open for Ole Miss, Alabama, you know, still has to play Texas A&M, and they still have to play Mississippi State, I think, Alabama, and yeah. the West. So, we're not out the, out the dark yet. So, there's a lot of teams. The only undefeated teams may be, and I hate saying this, maybe Florida State, unless Miami can some, some type of way hit the switch. Even coming out the coast, y'all might have to worry about, if it comes to that Georgia Tech, you know, but... Yeah, I should handle that. But that option offense can be tricky. But oh, most definitely. the thing about Miami, they haven't really shown a, a way to stop and run defense. So I can't really say Georgia Tech is that real or not. I can't say that. You know. Uh, 
Going back to what you said, we were speaking about the, the hot seat. What do you think about Charlie Strong in Texas? They lost to BYU at 28-7, to but what do you think about the job that Charlie Strong is doing in Texas? Well, the so thing is, we live in a microwave society, so everybody wants to win, like, immediately. Even if you know your team was shambles, they want chicken salad, chicken salad out of you know what. So, not well, Charlie Strong didn't come into a bad situation, but he threw off a lot of players off the team. Which he needs. Which, which that happens. And so... Whether Texas likes it or not, Charlie Strong, he should, he'll get it together, but it's kind of hard to go through the p growing pains right now. They play Oklahoma this week. Oklahoma lost to TCU. Red River rivalry. I mean, right now, the, the money is at bet against Texas. I hate to say it, but if you want, oh, you got to put the money against them. I mean, hey. The bet against them by a lot. A lot. I hate to say it like that, Charlie, but right now, you know. You know, you gotta get what you gotta get. So if that's the case, you gotta if you see Texas go against them until they show something. They almost beat UCLA, but that's when UCLA quarterback got knocked out the game early. So that's the reason why that game probably was close. But when they played Baylor, I think Baylor kinda put them in and put things in perspective. Baylor plays TCU this week. That's gonna be a tough game. I don't know, TCU defense, win championships. Baylor hasn't really beat anybody yet no, that really, is uh, on, no, a, on a top level. So, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you know what? That, that'll that be an interesting game. TCU looked good against Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma, you know, high-power offense. So, I'm interested to see. they uh, Trevor Knight, they, they bottled him up for most of the game. Yeah, that boy Borkins for TCU was nice. I didn't think TCU the defense was that good, but they are pretty state. You know, they're pretty solid. I mean, Oklahoma still put up 30-plus points, but that's Oklahoma. You expect that. It's going to be interesting what happens when well, TCU offense is explosive, though. Yes, yes. TCU is looking, TCU's looking very good on both sides of the ball. A lot of that spread offense is going on. Y'all run the spread, too, right? Uh, uh, what do they, what no. Do they, run? Uh, they run? They run a more of a pro-style offense. They'll, they'll throw some spread concepts in there, you know, go four wide and things like that. But when you, have a, when you have a unique talent like Jameis Winston, you know, you – He's not. I mean, he can run, but he's not a runner. Nah, he's, he, like, he's, he's more. Like he's more of an Andrew Luck type of player. I Real mean, if he needs to. As 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 a Hurricane fan, I don't really watch much Florida State. But as time goes on, you gotta be real. You gotta call a spade a spade. James Winston be putting that ball in some tight windows, like darts. And when you got a player that can put those darts out there like that, you know anything can happen. He has confidence. He's one. He know how to get that. He, he's clearly the leader of the team. So, but Florida State has a young team, so they're trying to find their stride. When they, who knows what Jimbo, which is scary because you don't, right now you don't know who to watch. You don't know, okay, should you double team Rudolph, which people are not because he's a freshman, but Floridians know, don't let Travis get a crack now. Don't don't let him get that. You got Dalvin Cook. Speaking, just speaking of Rudolph, actually scored his first touchdown yeah, of the player. season in, in the past game. Yeah, I want to Long bomb. Come, so. Yeah, I want to Rudolph to come to Miami, but you know he had to go to the better situation, which clearly. He want to win. You can't really knock a kid. Floridians, they want to win, period. So, or you see progress. Until we start getting some progress out of these other schools, right now Florida State is loaded up. They got George Campbell coming. They got Derwin James coming over there from Polk County. All world safety. All world. George number Campbell, number all world safety. athlete. Number one athlete in the country. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's getting to the point. I don't have to look at the rankings to know what's going on. It's going down right now. So, Golden... He needs to get it together. Something needs to give in a positive up direction because if not, he's gonna start losing oh, players. Oh, he's his gonna, own backyard. He's gonna lose his job in a minute. That's <laughs> what he's gonna do. Cause we're not gonna have that continue. We're not gonna keep losing games like that. I, I, we can't I have agree. That. I agree. That. Yeah. Even Florida, it's bad when Florida State fans are telling me who should be the coach at Miami. That's bad. Uh, ah, yeah. well. Uh, what did you think? What did you think about uh, Notre Dame and Stanford? Uh, Notre Dame pulled out a close one. I wasn't surprised. Yeah. Ever since that quarterback came back, is I mean the coach, I commend Chip Kelly for whatever reason he, he had the guy sit out for a year. That takes a lot of guts as a coach because not a lot of coaches would suspend a national championship, well, national championship appearance quarterback for the next season. But then he brought him back onto the team, which is another good aspect. It's right now it's a match made in heaven. Chip Kelly needs Ghost and Ghost needs Chip. I think Golston learned a lot of things from the sidelines, been away from the game for a year. He probably missed it, his teammates. As soon as he got back on, Golston's what? He hasn't, he's only lost one game as a starter? Maybe two? No, he only he only lost one game. That's uh, the Alabama, right? He lost it in grand fashion. Now. Yeah, I mean, he lost to Alabama. But who expected him to be to that game that year? You're, you're right. You know, they made it off a very strong defense. But, you know, a lot of those players in the uh, 
in the league right now. So what Chip Kelly's doing, what he did in Cincinnati, and that's win. I mean, that's what he does. That's not is it Brian Kelly or Chip Kelly? Chip. Brian Kelly. Brian, Brian, Brian Kelly. He, he wins. So with Brian going to Notre Dame, he's showing that he was worth the contract he got because Notre Dame was bad before he got there. Cincinnati players got mad when he left and went to Notre Dame, but right now. Lo and behold, Amber, they say he was a Notre Dame fan going up too, so he had to prestige, take prestige, prestige, job, go. prestige, money, everything. You can't, you don't yeah, turn down Notre Dame and State, Cincinnati. No, you can't do you that. You don't do it. The players got mad at him for that. What's this? Well, you know, they're 18 and 22 year olds. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? Yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll be okay. They'll understand <laughs> as they get older. They'll, as they get older, they'll understand you don't turn down a position like that. But that's setting up a showdown for you guys in Notre Dame, though. <sighs> that's going to that's gonna be, that's the test. I believe yeah, that's the that, test for the season for Florida State. That's a big State. test, yeah. If they come in undefeated, which they should, who, they yeah. play, who does Notre Dame play this week? Uh, they, 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 actually, they play North Carolina. They, play, they should win. Yeah. Now, North Carolina has talent, but they haven't shown anything. Florida State should win. Yeah, Florida State uh, goes against Syracuse, North, yeah, against North Carolina. Win. And Syracuse lost it. Syracuse starting quarterback is out for the season also, to you guys. Their starting quarterback is done. They bring in, I think they're bringing a new offensive coordinator in there, so... That's not a good thing to be bringing in your new quarterback and new offensive coordinator against the number one team in the country. Hint, hint. So you guys might want to check into that. Uh, college college game day already said they're going to be there at the game. Florida State, Notre Dame. Yeah. They have to go. Uh, prime time, 8 o'clock game. Top top five matchup as long as both of them win. Yeah, that's an unspoken uh, rivalry. I remember when Charlie Ward, them lost to Notre Dame back a couple years ago in 93, huh. but y'all came back and won a championship. It was, yes. Every time Florida State lost to Notre Dame, it was a shock to me. And then one year, I think those guys came to Tallahassee, and they, yes, and they, they won. They won and I was, I was stunned. But then the next year when y'all played them in Notre Dame, y'all beat them like 41-0 or something. Payback. Or they taxed. Payback. That's what they taxed that, that. They taxed that year. So this game right here, I mean, Florida State fans know, okay, this is not the game to sleep on these guys. You don't know what they have. They have a great offensive line. They have a great quarterback. It's going to be a marquee matchup between Golston and Jameis. One kid had to be suspended for a year. James had his situations. That's cleared up. Everything's behind him now. It's a good chance to sit back and enjoy some good football with some two dynamic quarterbacks. But make no mistake, before we move on, Jameis Winston is the better quarterback. I mean, I like Jameis, but I think Golston, I mean, he's picking up steam a little bit. He he's, he made plays. Oh, most definitely. Most he definitely. made plays. I mean, he's been making plays. I don't like and I don't like Notre Dame like that. I don't watch them like that, but I know this. This kid keeps popping up on my TV screen. What are you doing on my TV screen again? He's a player. He's a player. I I, I have to agree with that. He is a he's player. He's a player. He's a player. I just want to touch on. I want to touch on Michigan. Michigan State defeating Nebraska. Big time game in the Big Ten. Uh, Nebraska has all world dual running back. Bobbles him up. Well, Michigan State showed him this is what real run defense look like. You are gonna sit here and try to run against us? We are gonna put nine in the box. And you show me you can beat us like this. You can't give Abdullah cutback lanes. He's a cutback. You can't give him a cutback lane, which I think was something Miami. He had lanes before he could. See, he even had, got the ball. He seen where he might go. Gap integrity. Oh my gap god. Gap integrity. You cannot. Not in college football. Gap integrity. Are you serious? Leave that gap open if you want to. You're gonna get exposed. So <laughs> that's what's going on with that. But also watch your cousin in uh, Georgia. They doing pretty good over there. Ah, uh, Nick Chubb. Ah, uh, freshman phenom him. Sonny Michelle, Isaiah McKenzie out there, and you gotta, you know, you gotta give props to the the best running back Gurley. in college football right well, now. They've been saying that the past couple years about Todd Gurley. They say he was a top running back last year too. But he, but he's been injured. But this year he's been healthy. And he's been torching teams. Yeah, they said they play Missouri. They play Missouri this week. The spread is like three. Missouri has a hard time stopping the run. Um, one thing I know about college football: if you can't stop the running game, it's gonna be a long Saturday. Texas A&M showed me that Saturday when they played Mississippi State. And Mississippi State defense is hitting. Do not think those boys are, those boys are hitting. Texas A&M was, was dropping balls. They didn't want to catch the ball anymore. I said, I know why they don't want to catch the ball. That would. Just like you're talking about, that, the, the SEC West, obviously the best conference, the deepest, the deepest division. I want to say the conference because the SEC West, the SEC East is not good. But the SEC West is the best division in college football right now, but they cannibalize each other. Yeah. You know, you have all they, they have Auburn ranked number two. They have Mississippi State ranked number three. They play each other. 
Well, they, you know the SEC is probably saying we might want two SEC schools in, the, in this playoff. You know how the SEC gets. Yes, Which yes. eventually I think we're going to have to get the six. Eight. No more the eight team eventually for me. Because with the SEC West getting that much stronger, you know, Mississippi State, if they don't make it, or Ole Miss. You got Mississippi State, Ole Miss, Auburn. And this is LSU having a down year. LSU is not going to have a down year every year. And Arkansas might have the best running running game in the, t in, the in the nation, but it just happened to be in the SEC West. Shout out to Alex Collins. Alex Collins might Miami, be. Miami boy. He might be the best running back besides Gurley that nobody's heard about. Most definitely. Most I definitely. know about him. Other defenses know about him. But since they're not winning, they probably won't talk about it. But you will see Alex Collins playing on Sunday, barring injury. He will be there. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. definitely. He will be there Sunday, definitely. So, um, I mean, I think that's pretty much a good recap of the top 25, unless you have any other teams that you want to well, talk about. Well, only other team, like, you know, I'm an ACC guy, so I got to keep it within the conference a little bit. Clemson's quarterback, uh, Deshaun, where is it? Deshaun Watson. Watson. You got to watch out for him. The guy's looking like Superman. Watch out for number four for Clemson. And also, just to give a little bit of NFL tidbits a little bit before we go. The Bucks they're playing better. Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing better. Glennon at the quarterback count. They, they couldn't pull it out against the Saints. They're doing better. Um, New England blasted Cincinnati the other night. Yes. Shot some people. Thought Cincinnati would probably try to show that New England, they're the new, new guys on the block. Tom Brady, 37 years old, say I still got it. I get better with time. Classic. So you gotta take that in consideration when you get the man hyped up. He's he's gonna put on a show. Um, Super Bowl winner. I don't know who's gonna win it right now. It's a wide open almost. Ah, Seattle's still looking dominant. Seattle. Yeah, Seattle's still looking like the dominant team in the NFL. We'll see how that plays out. But Russell he, Wilson, yeah, he's the defense wins championships, and they have plenty yeah. of defense. What about San Diego? Not sold on them yet. Nah, no, it's not just yet. We'll see. They always look pretty good in the regular season. Well, they play Seattle this year too, right? Yeah. So what about the Cowboys? I don't like the Cowboys. Uh, they look good, though. Yeah. Offensive line, running yeah, game, they, they look, look good. good. DeMarco yeah. Murray, leading rusher in the NFL right now. So My Ravens, they still feeling it from letting go of Anquan Bolden. You should have kept him. Bolden, you should have kept Anquan Bolden. But, you know, you live and you learn. I guess cap space is a beast these days. Your boys at Atlanta, y'all have, who do y'all play? Y'all on the road this week or what? Uh, I don't want to talk about Atlanta right now. So, um. Well, no, no, no. The Falcons got a lot of injuries, so, you know, but, you know, I know that's his team, but. We got, are you going to talk about Florida State? Let's talk about the Falcons yeah, a little bit, too. Yeah, you know? lost three offensive linemen, yeah, so, they're, they're, you know, they're hurting right now, they're hurting, so. They're hurting right now, so. They'll, they'll get back on track. Um, before we wrap things up, let's go ahead and do our thank you letter of the week, sponsored by Challenge Scott Keepsakes. Uh, last week, the thank you letter was from Georgia to Missouri Missouri for beating South Carolina and keeping them alive in the SEC East race. Uh, this week, the thank you letter is from Clemson to Oregon. Uh, the term we've been hearing about is Clemsoning for years now, which is always when Clemson wins a big game, when they lose a big game that they should win. You know, they always find a way to lose a game. But you know what? Clemson's looking good right now. Clemson looked good last year when they beat Ohio State. In the orange balls. So you know what? The new term we're going to go with is organing. Mm. And that's the thank you letter from Clemson. Clemson wrote a thank you letter to Oregon saying thank you for taking away Clemsoning and making it organing. Well, well, last week a lot of letters should have got sent out because there were so many upsets. There should have been letters, tissues, reality checks going on. It was everything going on last week. And um, with these teams, just watch out for some of these teams. I hear the Clemsons, the Marshalls. Um, Florida State, you can't. A lot of people want to write out Florida State because they just tired of them winning. But you can't until you beat the, to be the champ. You got to beat the champ right now. You got to beat Florida State to get that right now. That's just that's just how it is right now. Simple as that. So, all right. So, uh, we're gonna close out the show once again. I'm Nicholas Austin Holiday. I'm Antoine Jackson, and this is Between Classes Sports. Thank you. You know how we do it, we have funky music in our ear We get to rock to ain't no fight to we just in there trying to win Ooh yeah, la la we grinding hard Ooh yeah, we not gonna stop Yeah, 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 yeah. Too late to turn back now We got work to do on a mission, by my business, I'm pushing through, I'm pushing through, no slacking, make it happen, we grinding, we grinding hard, we grinding